Hello, my name is Lena Faulkner, and this is my week four multimedia project for ethical analysis. In this current day and age, technology plays a huge role in our day-to-day -day operations as public administrators. I believe a very common dilemma that we do or may encounter is the misuse of technology. A 2015 survey by Philadelphia Business Journal identified that 64% of employees visit non-work related websites. And that was in 2015. So I would assume that the stats have gotten worse um, since then with the increase of various social media platforms. While this simple act may not seem like a huge dilemma, the cost does add up over time. Such actions by public employees waste state or federal department funds, um, you know, tax dollars, and departments suffer because they're not getting the dedicated attention from staff, their budget is being wasted, employees suffer because they are either letting their coworkers down or they are the ones being let down by their coworkers, depending on um, which side of the fence they're on and how they're using the technology in this scenario. Either way, it potentially creates a negative work environment Citizens and department goals also suffer because the more money resources that are being wasted on fraud and abuse, the less money that is going and being applied to benefit the public. In this situation, if I had a coworker wasting company funds through misuse of technology, it is my duty to try and stop it. Most organizations have a policy. Uh, if you see something, say something, and would expect me to report any negative behavior. My coworkers' actions are indirectly negatively affecting the agency and the public, and my lack of action by either turning a blind eye, staying quiet, uh, and doing nothing about it would be just as bad as if I were committing the act myself. Natural law theory by Aquinas, which basically tells us, you know, avoid offense, live in society, shun ignorance, um, because we're natural knowers, you know, we want to be right. So according to Aquinas, through natural law theory, people should naturally want to do the right thing. Uh, but due to ignorance and emotion, sometimes people fail to do the right thing. The emotional connection to social media and getting likes sways individuals from uh, to monitor their social accounts when they actually should be doing other tasks like working. Looking at Immanuel Kant's categorical imperatives theory, people have commands and morals, obligations that they must follow derived from reason. And with intellect, you know, they know what's right and what's wrong. So the logic of Kant's universalizability principle would mean if I do nothing about my coworker wasting department funds through the misuse of company technology, my actions then are saying that that's morally okay uh, for everyone to do all of the time, which of course would most likely contradict the agency's goals uh, value statement, code of ethics. So Kant's other principle highlights that lying and deception are never okay and we need to have consideration for other people. So as an employee, I could argue that if I do nothing, you know, I'm not lying, I'm not deceiving anybody, uh, I do my job and them not doing their job is not my problem. But that's not necessarily true because not speaking a truth, you know, according to Kant's principle, not speaking a truth can be viewed the same as being lying, as lying or being deceitful. So especially when the outcome, and you know that the outcome is going to have a negative effect on people. So for this scenario, I would choose the approach of Aquinas' natural law theory it seems to be the least dramatic. In actuality, my actions really could be applied to either theory. I believe the difference is more my lack of action. That would truly matter regarding which theory I went with, um, especially with the example of universalizing that behavior. 
So again, I think I would choose the natural law theory. I think it fits best to avoid offense. If I were comfortable with my coworker, I would first speak to them, remind them of the company policy, the code of ethics, you know, let them know that what they're doing isn't right uh, and it could cost them their job. If I wasn't comfortable with my coworker and we didn't have that kind of a relationship, I would then, you know, go directly to my supervisor and I would bring the matter to my supervisor's attention, um, an action that could be referred to as whistleblowing. If the supervisor didn't address the matter uh, and it continued, then I could just raise my concern, you know, up the chain of command until somebody addressed the matter. I believe this theory allows me to address the matter and keep the social setting and my workplace at ease. Assuming that, you know, originally my coworker took my advice prior to me getting administration involved and there was no, you know, reprimand for their actions, I think that would keep the setting at peace. If my coworker did say get in trouble and there was, that may bring up some kind of conflict um, between me and my coworker. And at the end of the day, though, my conscience would be clear. I know I would have made the right decision. I know that I would have fulfilled my duty, uh, obligation, and expectations to the organization, you know, that we work for. And that's it. Thank you so much for listening.